out of this form. So for example, if he picks the VWX all on the zero part, then I just go, <laughs> VWX all on the zeros, are you kidding me? I'll just pump up the V and the X's once, and I get more zeros here than I have ones or zeros here. Right? Because the V and the X can't be empty, so if I pump them up once, it gets doubled. You can write that out more carefully in mathematics, you know, labeling things and showing exactly how much bigger it gets, but you don't have to. You can just say, look, if the VWX part are all zeros, then when I make V2WX2, I'm getting two copies of V and X. One of them's got to have some zeros in it, so I get more than 32 zeros here, and none of this has changed at all. And that's a string that isn't in 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n. So Jeff would never do that, but I handled it in case he did. Would he pick VWX in the ones? I could pump that up. I'd get more ones than the other side. Would he pick VWXs in this set of zeros? No, he wouldn't do that either because that's too easy. There's a lot of things he could do, but whatever he does so far, I've handled it. What else might he do? You'll notice, remember in the finite state machine, this was so much easier. You nail the guy in the first n symbols. Here, I can't nail Jeff down much at all. He can move this thing anywhere he wants. He can shift it left and right as long as it's only 32 symbols worth. But it's actually really important that it's only 32 symbols, because if it was like 64 symbols, he could beat me. How can he beat me if it was 64 symbols? What would he do? Straddle that one part, right? Could he do that? Yeah. Can he really? Too many Almost, right, it's tricky. But it, well. Alternate from 0 to 1. Right. right, you would duplicate a 0, 1, you'd get 0, 1, 0, 1. But, so I could still get him, but it would be more of an argument. But I could come up with examples where he could beat me if this was longer. If it were just like equal zeros, ones, and I can mix them any way you wanted, he could beat me then. Right, because then straddling this. He could get equal zeros and ones coming up on every side. I'd be, I'd be dead. By the way, equal zeros, ones, and zeros, that's not context-free either. But if we're using that language, Jeff could beat me. So I don't want him to beat me. That's why I nailed him down to less than 32 symbols. So we considered all the possibilities now. All in zeros, all in ones, all in zeros. And now what's left? He could straddle the border. So you've got to handle all of these. And it's a long list of cases, and it's a tedious kind of thing. You just go through all the cases. If it straddles the border, then the v could be zeros, and then the x could be ones. And if you do that, it pumps these two up correctly, but it leaves this mismatched. If it was on this border, where the, x, where the v was some of these ones and the x was some of these zeros, then it pumps these two up correctly, keeping them matched. Say there was two zeros here, two ones here, and two zeros here. It pumps them up right, but then this guy is mismatched. Right? Now, what if it was the v equals right on the border, one zero, and the x equals, you know, zero, two? What happens there? That means right on this border. That, that's even worse because the v's get. Duplicated, you get one zero one zero one zero. This gets duplicated zero 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 zero, and then it doesn't even look like of the form zero to the n one to the n zero to the n at all. You get these zero ones showing up. So anything that Jeff wants to do, if he mixes a v to have ones and zeros in it, I win. If he has them be just ones and these just zeros, and he uses this border, I win. If he uses this border, I win. If he puts them all in one of the three sections, I win. A long argument. It's long. It would be a page of just, just a tedious argument to convince everybody that no matter what he says, I can find a way to pump out this grammar of his and get strings that don't look like this. And then his grammar is not really doing what he said it was. All right, that's the pumping lemma for context free languages. If you thought the other pumping lemma was tedious and long and annoying, this is more so. <laughs> it just is. It's, it's, there's no other way around it. What I want to do is kind of write this up formally and then stop for some questions and, and recap. Pumping lemma for CFL.
It starts the same way the other puppy lemma starts. If L is a regular set, then all this is true. If L is a CFL, then all this is true. And the same thing happens with, uh, with this pumping lemma. If L is a CFL, all this pumping stuff is true. But it's possible that if L is not a CFL, that all this pumping stuff is true anyway. Okay, this is not an if and only if. So just because you find a language and it pumps out right doesn't mean necessarily that it's a CFL. If it doesn't pump out right, then you know it's not a CFL. But if it does pump out right, it could either be a CFL or not. That's it's not a not a characterization, it's just an implication. All right, so if L is a CFL, there exists an N. This N is the number that you have to make strings longer than. So I'm going to put in parentheses just so you remember what it is. This is 2 to the N, where N equals the number of non-terminals in the Chomsky normal form grammar. Wasn't that 2 to the N plus 1? Uh, yeah. Two it's 2 to the N plus 1 afterwards. But it, it doesn't matter. Just make it bigger. Just make it bigger. So there exists an n, and in particular, what is that n? Any n that's bigger than 2 to the n plus 1, where n is the number of non-terminals in the C Chomsky normal form grammar for this language. Just make that note to yourself. That's what the n is. So there exists an n such that for every string, for every z in L, where the string is bigger than n, the string is long enough, bigger than that, that, that size, there exists u, v, w, x, y equals z. So there exists a way to write the string like this, such that v, w, x is less than or equal to n vx is greater than or equal to 1. So this is Jeff's turn. He gives me the number. This is my turn. I give him the string bigger than that number. This is Jeff's turn. He splits it into five parts according to my restrictions. And now this is my turn. For every i, greater than or equal to 0, u, v to the i, w, x to the i, y is also in L. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, welcome to the front. All right, let me look at this again. Big, ugly lemma. Simple, nice, elegant idea behind it, but just hard to write down. I'll read it out. If L is a CFL, the following is true. Let's call this the pumping property. There exists an N. That N is anything bigger than 2 to the N plus 1, where N is the number of non-terminals in the Chomsky normal form grammar. There's some N. That's how you get it. For every single string in the language that's bigger than that n, this has to be true. There is a way to write that string in five separate parts, concatenated together equaling the string. The middle three parts smaller than that n, the second and fourth part together not empty, such that every single one of these v's and x's, as many times as you want to pump them, if you pump them up that many times, u, v to the i, w, x to the i, y, pump them up as much as you want, those strings are also in the language. That says it. Now, if that's not bad enough, the way you use this is you run a negation sign through it. Remember, if this isn't true, then that's not a CFL. So how do you say that this isn't true? It means for every n, there exists a string, such that for every way you write it in five parts, there exists some i that shows that that string is not in l. We run through that negation just like we did with finite state machines. And that's the conversation I had with Jeff, is that negation of this. I'll write that down just so everybody gets it. 